In this video, we'll be covering Bitwig Studio's bend node effect, but before we do that, it's useful to kind of cover how typical synthesizer glide works, which is, in essence, the same thing. We are still going to be doing some bending from one note to the next, but it's relative to the previous note that's been played. So just to start this out, I'm going to play the same note a few times just to kind of clear some things out. And let's then bring this up to, yeah, let's bring it up to like 400 milliseconds or so, so it's really obvious. Now I'm going to hit that same note I just hit before. And we don't hear any glide happening on it. We don't hear any pitch bend, which is actually going to then fundamentally differ when we get over to this. But basically, I'm going to play a lower C. Let's play more of a middle C. And then let's play a higher C. And then let's jump all the way back to that lower one. And all the way up to the higher one. And then let's play a few notes kind of all just centered around a C. And then let's really drop it. Okay, so you can hear how that's working. Like, that's very obvious to the ear. We also, of course, have the legato glide, which this is more often used when an instrument is in, like, mono mode, where it's only going to glide when notes overlap. So if I'm just hitting no glide happening, but if I do, and now I'm going to play another note while still holding down that first one, you can hear that it's only going to trigger when that overlap is occurring. And that's not the point of this video, so we won't record that out so you can see it, but that's how it works. So with the pitch bend, basically this is then taking that gliding effect and putting it onto the note itself. And where this again fundamentally differs is when you set this up, you can't edit that after the fact. I mean, you can automate this, you could automate that, but you can't go in there and like change the angle, like you, you can't go in there and then change like the, the pitches, like that's all kind of preset based on what you're playing. So now, like if we go in here, let's just play a few notes. Okay, if we go and we bounce this out, what's going to be unique about this is we are going to get to see the actual bend on the note. Okay, so if we go in here, you can see what's been drawn in there at that curve. And if I wanted to, I could, for example, on this one, remove those. I could use my alt key to change the curve myself. I could even say, you know what, I want this first one to be an octave. And then I want the other ones to all look like that. Or I could just remove it on some. So if I go back up here again, add this in, turn off the bend. And let's just go in there on, on one of these and, and let's like change the shape on this one to do something really funky. Let's do... Let's do that, okay? This is just showing that this is possible. I don't know if you'd ever actually do this, but... And maybe that last one doesn't need any bend at all. So that's what makes it really unique and cool is that you have the ability to control it and you can do some very unique things with it. And again, like if you wanted to sort of simulate the same behavior, you could do that if you wanted to in terms of that distance that it's going from one note to the next. But we're not going to worry about that here in this video. Um, it's kind of two very different like use cases. So the other thing that's nice about this is that if we are, for example, taking this back out of that mono mode and we're playing a chord, you can hear what that's doing. It's, it's applying it to all of them. So we'll go in and uh, yeah, we'll record the results here. Nice. 
and you can see that it's added it on. And then if you wanted to be unique and creative, you could slightly alter these if you wanted to do that. So it's not just going to be locked into the single note, right? Like as we were kind of looking at before with, with the glide and the way that that's working. Um, so that's one other just kind of fun feature about that. So if we think about this device, very easy. We have very little to cover here before we jump into the manual and see if there's anything unique to experiment with. You get to choose the starting pitch to then the final pitch that it's hitting. So let's just go all the way down. And all of these things are modulatable which will make it really interesting if you wanted to throw random on any of these parameters. Like that would be wild to just hear what the outcome is. We also then have that shape control or or and of course you could automate that. We then have the time parameter set in 16th notes. So we could go all the way up or we can go all the way down. And you can always offset that then by an additional percentage if you want to do that. Or you can just work in duration in like milliseconds. So if we wanted to do like a really, really quick pitch thing that, let's see, let's let's start here. That's so fast you can't even really hear it. Oh, you hear that though. And that's just me like going crazy on the keys so that you can just hear kind of what what's possible, what you could do if you got really creative with it. Um, and again, for me, as we go over with these all the time, recording the result, having that stuff right there for you to then tweak for a final production is great too. Um, and something that you just can't really do with your traditional kind of pitch glide, pitch bend settings. Um, I shouldn't say pitch bend, but the the glide and the legato. It's funny, you know, you produce music for a certain amount of time and you just forget like what the things are called. Not important though, as long as you know what they're doing. So finally, we do have a little pre-delay that we could also add on. That's like the only thing over here. So if you wanted to have a delay of a half note and then have it take you know a full note you could do that so we'll hear a pretty long delay before this goes into effect that's kind of cool I'm just thinking about this more in raw experimental terms, but that gives you an idea of, of what the pitch bend does. And, and there's really nothing else to go over with it. It's that simple. But as we've been doing in all of these videos, we're also going to go into the manual and see their examples and see if any of them are worth, worth highlighting. There's one for sure that I know is worth highlighting that makes this really quick and easy for people if you're doing a bunch of like synth stacking or something like that. All right, so here's where we have the manual. And I don't even think we really need to read the description because it's pretty much all we've covered. So you can see adding glissando, pretty much covered that. New sound design possibilities, we pretty much covered that. Responsive possibilities, modulating bend amount or time with velocity or really with anything. And we can demonstrate that very easily if we just were to go in here and add something like the expressions. But you could use any of these things, you know. This is just their example. And we bring up velocity just to the time, or sorry, the amount, I should say, the starting pitch. Mm. And I'm going to play something really light. Then I'll slam one. And then you could always like just record something in and randomize the velocity and see what you get. But again, you could do anything. You can do this on any of the parameters. That's where it's up to you to really kind of experiment and see what's going to happen. But that's what they're talking about there in the manual. 
Now, this is where I think there's a very obvious use for people. Um, if you are doing something with a stacked instrument, such as the instrument layer, you can drop one of these in the front and have that consistent pitch glide without having to try to go into, and I know it's a totally different way of looking at this anyway, but without having to go into each one and to match it. So let's bring an instrument track in here. Let's bring up an instrument layer. Let's bring up a preset if there is something good. How about this one? I know there's only two <laughs> instruments on there, but we could bring on the bend. We can even bring on a preset. Let's bring on the bend and key track, which has a key track basically saying starting at C3, nothing's gonna happen. And then the further you go away from C3, the more extreme. Let's go up an octave. And the beauty there is it's applying it to both of these instrument layers, not just to one. So if I mute this, or I mute this, that's how it's working. And so that's a very quick kind of speed up or a quick way if you are thinking, oh, okay, I want to have a little bit of a, a little bend action happening, but I have this really complicated instrument layer. Bam, there you go, fast and easy. And then the final one we already talked about, an alternate concept of glide starting relative to the new note instead from the pitch played previously. That's what we went over at the beginning. So let's just see if there are any other presets that are really interesting in here. Bend and note count to five. To be honest with you, I do not even know what that's doing. Ah, okay. Now I understand. You can see with each one, it's adjusting the amount to something higher and higher with a count of five. Let's bring the increment up to two so we can see that. But based on the range there, it's not getting all the way to five. Um, yeah, that gives you... Let's increase the amount and change it to eight, just so that we all know what's happening here. I don't think I've ever used this note counter thing before. Yep, so there you go. That's kind of cool. Bend via velocity. I don't think we have to look at that. Fast pitch envelope. We don't have to look at that. Fifth bend, incoming notes, da 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 da, and inverse macro button. Okay. I don't think this is going to be that exciting. As you can see, there's only the one. And the pre-delay is on. And that explains why we weren't hearing it initially. And then you can see it does, with this button click, it will change the direction versus... And this is often how I actually learn ideas in Bitwig, too, is going down here and, and kind of going through presets sometimes. Okay, I don't think anything else we really need to cover there. Everything, I think, is just going to be kind of standard stuff. So that is the bend note effect. And easy to work with, doesn't require somebody to make a video for you, but here we are, and I hope it was useful in some way. Like always, if you're a seasoned Bitwig user and you use this thing or you use it in combination with other note effects, please do share your experiences down in the comments so we can all learn some new cool Bitwig, you know, little tips and tricks. Uh, otherwise, I hope everybody has a fantastic day. And until next time, take care.